Round one. Fight. Heroes never die. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. <laughs> I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Power, sex, sex, power. They both come down to one thing. Hungry Gamers. Hello, 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 and welcome boys and girls to the 110th episode of the Hungry Gamers podcast. We are powered by 8bit.net and Audio-Technica. I'm your not-so-humble host, Brendan White, who can be found everywhere at Brendan 8 Bit. Joined today, my one partner in crime, my only partner in crime, my main partner in crime, Ali Hart, who can be found at Miss Ali Hart. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. You can call me Miss Frequent. I feel like I'm always here. That's all right. I might take a few weeks off. Oh, touche. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. But, um... Yeah, the elephant in the room, or I guess not in the room, but old uh, Salim the Dream Abraham is uh, indisposed this evening. Um, you know, don't want to confirm nor deny anything, but maybe he's got a, a sort of a, a lock-up session going on currently, spending a bit of time behind the bars after a bit of indecent exposure. Who knows? Oh, he's going to love you for these comments, but not deny them. Yeah, so I, I know his lawyers told him to just, you know, claim not guilty. The the fly on his, his uh, JJ's jeans were broken and, you know, he yeah, it's, it's out of his control. So we'll see what happens there. We wish him all the best. Hopefully you don't see him on your local news coverage, but if you do, uh, hopefully they've drawn him well in those cartoony caricatures you always see um, when he's in there in the galleys and, and the uh, the jury's in there as well. Hopefully he looks good. They Hopefully they capture his big eyebrows and his very strong jawline. What do they people say that he looks like? Like either Ray Romano or um, oh the Hulk. Who's that guy? Eric Banner. No, the recent Hulk. Mark Ruffalo. That's right. Ooh. Isn't that what he got once? He got yeah, a. He's he's got a bit yeah. of Mark Ruffalo to him. He's 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 not a bad looking fella. Um, hopefully they give him access to podcasts in in the pen, and he can listen to this episode one day and hear the praises we're giving him. But um, yeah, dream. <laughs> we love you. Good luck. We'll bake you a cake with chisels in it and uh, we'll get you out of there eventually. <laughs> Old school. Yeah. What if that would still work though? Yeah. So, Knowing him, um, we'd probably want cigarettes. That's <laughs> currency, right? That is currency. You know, that that is like the equivalent of gold bullion in there. And no one dream, he'd, he'd have a side hustle going on where he'd, oh, yeah. he'd quickly ascend to, you know, king of, of the local, local prison system within a few weeks, I dare say. <laughs> Kingpin. Yeah. Uh. Mm. So we're here, hundred and tenth time. Um, sorry, I couldn't couldn't be there last week with yourselves. I was jet setting abroad. Uh, That's right. and, and truth be told, the North and South Islands confuse me too. Oh, so don't good. feel bad. Um, I didn't because... receive any hate mail yet. No, no, they're <laughs> you know they're probably still catching up or on that episode. Um, probably in a little bit of a shock after hearing our our lack of knowledge on on that front. But um. Yeah, good part of the world, cold part of the world right now. Though, holy shit, it yeah. was like minus three um, on the morning there. I got to Christchurch, and yeah, it was it was something. I enjoyed and it, but it went right through me. I, I've got to ask because you posted up a picture of the most amazing looking pizza. Mm-hmm. Was that there? Was that in that New is Zealand? there? Yeah. What it's, the hell? It's the closest I can find to that proper sort of New York style pizza pie, oh. like because. Australia, we're lacking for some reason, but uh, there's a, there's a chain through New Zealand called Sal's New York Pizzeria or Sal's Taste of New York or something like that, and it okay. is bang on the money. I mean, it looked amazing. Mm. Yeah, it looked, and did you eat the whole thing? Uh, like I, I went over with one of my workmates, so we ate the whole pizza, and we also had like a pack of garlic knots and some mozzarella oh. sticks and some some of the old black gold Coca Cola. And uh, yeah, went to bed feeling very, very sad and sorry for ourselves, but God, it was good. Oh man, like that's the one appreciation that I have with them for most American style pizza is that you can buy it by the slice and it literally go from your fingertips to like your elbow Mm -hmm. and that's one slice. So, oh, and and, it's cheap. Yeah. Yeah, it's super cheap as well. It's a, oh God, we have it terrible over here. Yeah, we, we're really lacking in the pizza department here in, in the old Australia. Mm. Uh, 
and it's bizarre that it hasn't taken off here like obviously burgers and all that like it is the fad to end all fads um you know there's in and out pop-ups every other month and things like that but yeah no no proper new york style pizzerias or like even doing the chicago deep dish which Mm. really isn't a pizza technically but it's still pretty delicious yeah i'm sure maybe some of our listeners might know some good pizza out there it's going to obviously be those little like little tiny shops in the middle of an alleyway somewhere that you know the hidden gems of australia but definitely i have not found good pizza in australia yeah and and listeners if if you do know of of places like this pizza or otherwise any of those little hidden gems and little local haunts down the alley where you feel like there's a may there's a strong chance you may contract hepatitis or be robbed (laughs) they're usually where the goodness lives so send us there obviously free of hepatitis and robbings but to the good plus please i mean at least you've had a good meal by the time you get mugged oh yeah yeah i I can i can die happy (laughs) my anus can be raped happily right now and we're gonna get that sound bite for something (laughs) (laughs) remember this time Mm -hmm. that definitely Mm. definitely took a turn for the worse but um yeah so we're here uh, I guess we should probably kick things off the way we always do and talk Ooh. about what we've been playing, what we've been doing. You have a fucking jam-packed list here, mate. Yeah, like um, especially the first few because obviously I was traveling for most of last week. So I was on a fair few flights and then a few Uber rides and things like that. And then in the hotel. So I was sort of looking for ways to kill time outside of work. Hmm. And, um, yeah, one of the ones that has sunk its claws into me, uh, pun intended, I guess, is another mobile game called uh, Jurassic World Alive, which Ooh. I'm not sure if you know much about this one, Miss Hart. No, because, like, I saw Jurassic and I just assumed that you've been playing this game that everyone else has been playing on the PC, where you have, like, it's like Sims or, you know, like a tycoon of, like, Jurassic Park. But this is something different, obviously. I do have that other one you're talking about too, but I haven't played it yet. That's I think it's Jurassic World Evolution. I think that's called. Sounds about right. Um, I, I will crack into that eventually, but this is like a similar concept to like a Pokemon Go. So it's using real world location. You can catch dinosaurs <laughs> and battle them and things like that. So um, yeah, I was roaming all over Auckland and Christchurch. And, and obviously via the convenience of Uber, I was catching a lot of dinosaurs because I was always on the move so I could catch them and keep going because obviously Jeez. you have to be active a la Pokemon Go. Um, and yeah, so I've got Velociraptors, I've got Tyrannosaurus Rexes, Ankylosaurs, all these things. And, and so- then you can start hybridizing them. So you mix a a t-rex with the velociraptor and make you know the indominus rex or whatever the hell and all these other things so is that um, a t-rex that flies (laughs) there is no flying dinosaurs in this game yet though so i'm a little bit sad about that but um yeah been killing a bit of time with that who's Uh, your main oh you have so you roll out similar to pokemon you roll out with a roster of six Mm -hmm. is it eight six six or eight it's one of those two denominations but um, yeah, so I've got a couple of raptors, I've got a T-Rex in there, I've got a Stegosaurus and a, another one too. So you mix them up and it like, the attacks are based off obviously the damage ability you have, then you've got health and then you've got like armor level and then critical hit chance as well. Mm-hmm. And then you've got a few different attacks. So there is a little bit of strategy to it, but I just find if you can get in with like a Velociraptor because they're fast, you can usually mm-hmm. just like one shot most things. So you just sort of cheese it that way. Um. <laughs> So yeah, been been cracking some skulls uh, in the uh, in the dra- Jurassic and Triassic eras. Uh, outside of that, something that you mentioned, Sam, or asked Sam last episode if he's been playing, I actually cracked into a little bit of Pokemon Go as well. Oh um, yes, I've I've accrued a few friends. Sadly, <laughs> I haven't found your friend ID yet, so we cannot be Pokemon Go friends. No, but, uh, I, I realized that the other day, so I'll post it on my Instagram or something like that and mm. get a few friends. Yeah, so I've got that. Maybe. I still don't know how to trade. Well, at least you'll have one. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, the trading thing's funny because I don't think I don't think you can trade overseas. Like, oh, really? Or like country specific? I don't think you can trade those. Yeah, so, so I, don't, maybe I don't know the intricacies of it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you trying to trade like a Kangaskhan for a Tauros or something like no, that? No, I was trying to get some really cute little, like, I think it's like a Mexican turtle. 
So There's so many Pokemons I've never heard of that I'm catching right now. Don't get me started. I don't want to sound like a freaking old fogey like I do 90% of the time. But now that they've actually listed all the Pokemon in their different, like, regions and all the different, like, seasons and everything like that, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, Mm. couldn't we just keep it to the OG? Because, like, now I'm walking around and I just don't... I don't, like, I see these weird little Pokemon. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Hmm. I'm sure people thought the same with the OG ones, but still. And I've also, like, on these observations when I'm like, what? What is going on? In, like, my immediately <laughs> aging voices, I'm, I'm seeing these bizarre Pokemon pop up on my screen. They seem to have, like, a lot less detail in the character models. Like, they're, mm-hmm. like, just a little cube or, like, a little onion or a little squiggly line or something i'm like these guys aren't even trying anymore i mean to to be fair we come from the generation of ditto but um that's true and uh (laughs) unon (laughs) the alphabet pokemon okay and what's the other was this like another one that's like grimer is it grimer he's just like a blob Mm, grimer and muck yeah 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 so we, we 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 didn't have the most creative ones either but that's true i mean they they do seem like they're just like they look at an object and go sure that could be a Pokemon. Mm. Yeah, like I I'm choose just... you, Ken of Pokemon. Oh, see, I was going to go Staplezoid because I'm looking at one of them over there too. I'm glad that we all looked at something and just went, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's what I'm working with. Yeah, he, he's definitely resistant to wind attacks, um, but fire <laughs> would be a weakness because he's made of plastic. So he better watch himself. And mine is good health. <laughs> yeah, and you've got like an acid attack <laughs> yeah pretty much spit black gold acid and just corrode everything yeah so i've been playing a bit of pokey um more so gearing up too for let's go eevee mm-hmm. uh, i'm assuming you're probably let's go pikachu when this game yes, lands. This, i think this is the biggest controversy this year for the uh hungry gamers is my single stance of uh pikachu yeah, and the it's fact that you hate Eevee, but also in my homeboy, you hate Squirtle as well, which is yeah, like I don't really like Squirtle. Big personal attack, but you know, each their own. <laughs> you know, we we I'm, can't be right all the time. I mean, this is the person whose favorite Pokemon is friggin' Snorlax and Psyduck. So mm. I don't know what that says about me. I don't. I don't think anyone should take my opinion on Pokemon too seriously. Yeah. I was gonna say like you're sloth like, but there's even a sloth Pokemon. I can't remember his name. Oh, in the new series? Yeah, yeah. He's he's like oh, a little don't sloth. Tell me that. Sloth don't or tell a lemur? No, it's a sloth, sorry. Lemurs are completely different. Jesus Christ. Where right, are we now going I need with to, this? I need to find a friggin' sloth Pokemon now. Thanks. Mm, yeah, he's he's like white and like a brownie grey, and then he's got some tinges of red on him, and he's got his little claws. Oh, yeah. Great. Now I have to actually go outside. <laughs> if If I think I might have one, I can trade him to you. Oh, that sounds good. You'd have to just step me through it because, as I said, I'm clueless as hell. Now, how do I do the Pokemon Mm. transfers? Something else I'll probably need to get a hand with, too, is I finally started cracking on to my Switch copy of Stardew Valley. (gasps) Oh, my God. This makes me so happy. It's so damn cute. Do you like it? I I do. Yeah! Even, like... I remember I was flying to Christchurch from Auckland and so I had a session for you know an hour and a half or so uh, on it to start with mm-hmm. and all I really did was obviously make my little character name name my farm go meet a few people and then I just like hooked in I'm like right I'm gonna roll up my little 8-bit sleeves here and I'm gonna break down all the rocks and all the trees and all the weeds in my yard here and start making it pretty so Mm -hmm. you know i was swinging my axe and swinging my little hoe and swinging my pickaxe and all that nonsense um sadly my my cardio isn't that good because apparently i can only knock down about eight trees until i gotta go to sleep otherwise i pass (laughs) out and you know doctor cost me 80 bucks no bulk billing in bloody stardew land (laughs) so yeah people find you passed out on your farm yeah yeah, but I'm really liking it. I'm really liking it. Um, the little world you sort of uh, co-inhabit with the other, other uh, you know NPCs throughout the um, throughout the farmstead and things are really nice. I like mm-hmm. that there's a bit of a diverse uh, environment to sort of conquer. There's you know the mines and you can go sort of near the sea and the harbor and mm-hmm. then you're sort of a bit inland and whatnot. So I like that there is a a fair amount of room to roam. 
Um, my farm's pretty non-existent at the moment. I've, I've got a, I think I've got a couple of potato crops. Um, <laughs> some, I planted some sunflowers, you know, trying to pretty up the place. Yeah, as you do. Uh, and then a couple other bits and pieces. Like I think I, I planted the, the little maple seed things and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, Stick it's to literally, vegetables. yeah, it's literally been just a whole heap of just routine generic farm activities that I've and been yet, undertaking. It's, it's oddly therapeutic. It is. <laughs> you feel a sense of accomplishment with this game mm. for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Have you picked but a lady I'm... or no, a man? I, I haven't met them all yet. And the ones okay. that I have met, I'm confused if they're taken or not, some of them. So I'm just <laughs> like, how do I broach this topic with these ladies? Um, <laughs> and so obviously I haven't sort of evolved a lot of the conversations and the relationships yet. It's sort of just the I'm the, the new guy that's, that's you know inherited my my dying grandpa's farm or was the grandpa wasn't i think that hands the farm down to you i think so i don't i I didn't pay attention who gave me my shit Mm. someone also gives me money regularly so (laughs) yeah oh i'm so so glad um, that you're playing this and i'm so glad that you enjoy it you're gonna have to get some um i guess some information from bloody nato on which women you should pursue because he says i have terrible taste Oh, okay. I will seek guidance to my uh, e daddy and, and see what he what he tells me. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. Like as you said, it's it's a very soothing game. Like not a whole lot's mm-hmm. going on, and obviously the the graphical fidelity isn't there. But I think that's part of the charm as well. That it is like a real simplistic sort of eight bit style game. Um, the the little sort of chip tune soundtrack to it's nice and and some of the interactions and the the story they weave in you know where there's, mm-hmm. there's this big conglomerate trying to come in and close up all the shops and and sort of put a shopping mall you know or a supermarket or whatnot in there and you're fighting against the man and stuff like that i think that's <laughs> kind of cool that they sort of bake that in over the top yeah but um yeah i'm really liking it i I want to play multiplayer on it though, but I don't know if that's on the Switch yet. I think that's just PC, isn't it? Yeah, just PC for the moment. And Dang to it. Feel, I'm surprised I still haven't even attempted to do that multiplayer because I'm looking forward to that. Mm. Show off my wares. Yeah, so so I have no wares at the moment. I've I've got a you know nice little crop of taties, um, you know, taties growing away, but that's about mm-hmm. it. So. I'm a humble farmer. I mm-hmm. I was I was tempted to pick the um the farm that's sort of on the group of islands, but then I oh, thought, yeah. well, that could be a bit risky. So I just went with like the generic one to start with, just to sort of cut my farm and teeth. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's hella fun. Like it's sad that I'm so late to the party, uh, eh. but I'm I'm really enjoying my time through on it now. I'm about four hours in, I dare say. Uh, so I'm I'm still probably very much. It's only the, the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's only the beginning, my good friend. No. So the only tips I'm going to give you is make sure you stick to vegetables that have like the regrowth opportunity. So it's usually because mm-hmm. usually when you harvest, it'll, it'll harvest and you have to plant seeds again. So go for the ones that, you know, mass produce. The other thing is, is that once you start hitting towards the season of winter before that, save up your pennies because mm-hmm. there's not a great deal of stuff that you can do in the winter. So you might as well take that opportunity to upgrade your tools. Oh, nice. Okay. I will keep that in mind. If, um, yeah, if I'm in need of guidance, you know, obviously I'll, I'll reach out to NATO on, on the love front because I think you've got good taste. I don't know. I'd, I'd actually probably, I'll yeah. ask his both and okay. then I'll see how it plays out. You know, we'll have a game <laughs> within a game, so to speak. So yeah. He has his opinions. Mm. So Stardew is pretty great. Uh, Realm Royale, yes. still pretty great. Loving that. So you're still playing that, that, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I haven't played it much in the past, you know, week or so, but I've had a few sessions here and there. I'm getting better. I'm still not very good, but (laughs) I feel more comfortable now in Mm -hmm. in combat. I feel like in a one-on-one battle, unless they're sort of god tier, I can usually put up a damn good fight. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But a game that I can't really put much of a fight up in, which I'm also late to the party on, is Rainbow Six Siege. (sighs) Fucking NATO yeah. got his claws in here, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Peer pressured us and peer pressured us and, uh, you know, threatened violence on me a few times, uh, you know, but uh, it's now installed and we played a few rounds this week. Uh, it's great. It's obviously very, very simple in the concept, but mm-hmm. having all these different operator classes with different abilities and play styles, there is a lot of utility to the game um, and, and the 5v5 
dynamic in multiplayer is really good. Uh, but yeah, it's tense. It's tense. Like, yeah. you know, it's not a it's not a quick twitch shooter where you're running around like mad. Obviously, it's very tactical and yeah, slow paced. Like, you don't run into a room, which which you know I find out the hard way. I'm used to sort of just running and gunning, <laughs> and I'm running and gunning and dying pretty quick. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's the thing with this game. There's a, there was a lot of elements to when it came, got first announced. Where I was like, oh, this sounds awesome. But then after watching a lot of playthrough and a lot of gameplay, obviously, like, the professionals, they do go pretty fast. But, like, for the most of our standard tier, it is actually very slow and very tactical. Like, there is mm-hmm. so much pre-thinking of, like, okay, if you're going to go around that corner, I need you to breach this wall and I need you to do this and you need to time it right and make sure you get the cameras and watch out for little drones. Like, it is... Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it. I've bought it, but um, I've been stubborn to um, install it because of the install and then the update. It really is ridiculous. And for yeah. like a game where it's the same concept, you know, in its essence, you know, goodies versus baddies, 5v5, kill these people, defuse that bomb, plant that bomb, steal that hostage, so on and so forth. Mm. It is huge in size. Like, as you said, like it's about 100 gig worth of <laughs> download for this game fucking like, lot. <laughs> hmm. like it runs well and it looks good but yeah i don't know where all this all this sort of gigabyte is going like where where are they in this game is it you know have they got some just bizarre rendering pack in there doing something crazy or maybe there's maybe it's like a keystroke sort of counter in there and it's just stealing all our data maybe that's what's happening it's just maybe that is it. you know selling it to zuckerberg or something who knows god damn hmm that's what i've been playing yeah what have you been playing well speaking of the switch i decided to give another battle royale game that i didn't enjoy a second chance so Fortnite. um i actually enjoyed it more on the switch which is actually quite surprising i didn't think i was gonna actually enjoy it any more or less changing um platforms but it actually works really well on the switch it's it's not the first time i've heard you know that statement as a whole from a lot of people in the gaming space that they didn't really sort of latch onto Fortnite or they tried it and it didn't, you know, miss the mark for them. But on Fortnite, on the Nintendo Switch, it seems to have almost found this second wind yeah. for a lot of players. Uh, I, I've downloaded on the Switch, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah. But I was the- curious to see, did the, did the bindings work fine for the building no. and things like that? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it didn't. Um, that's the one thing that probably tarnished the experience for me is that the key bindings for me were just all, like a bit all over the all over the joint, especially having the A button to switch between whether you want to build or um, access your inventory, um, your like your guns and weaponry. Mm-hmm. That threw me off. Yeah, I think I've got a problem. I don't actually know if it's customizable. It better be. But the standard, the standard key binding is really janky. Um, but I played, um, played a few solos, played a few um, fifty on fifty best three. I think it is. Um, it plays so well. I don't know why I'm so surprised that it plays well. But I was actually honestly impressed with how smooth it was. No hiccups. No long loading into lo- like lobbies. God, that was a fucking tongue twister. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it actually played really good. So. Uh, that was probably the longest amount of time I've probably played um, Switch, uh, Switch Fortnite on Switch, because okay. I didn't like it on PC. Have you um? Are you been playing in sort of handheld mode or in docked? Uh handheld, handheld. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Actually, I don't think I ever play my fucking Switch docked, like ever. Mm. See, I'd I'd play Fortnite docked because it'd feel good with the Pro controller. But um, mm. I'm hoping you can change the button mapping because on PC and obviously on um, Xbox and PS4, you can change to a, a sort of layout. And I think it's called like Master Builder or Expert Builder. And it okay. maps the building buttons to the, the four triggers. So, yeah. So, so you just, you know, press to the build and then you can just go, you know, vertical wall, flat wall or, you know, floor, stairs, rooftop, just with different buttons on the on the triggers, which works really well. Yeah, mm. yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you can change it because it, even just the friggin', just the standard buttons of just changing between build mode and um your weapons that that'd be just nice because I definitely went to shoot people with a brick wall a bunch of times. <laughs> so, 
I'm gonna brick you to death, motherfucker. <laughs> Well, no, you're just another brick in the wall. Mm. Um, and then I've been playing a lot more PC. Um, I have fallen victim to the Steam sale. Um, and I deep dived into those $10, under $10 games. And I found a game called The Room. Um, can, can I ask? It's it's not like Mr. Wiseau's room, is it? It's not based off that. By golly, do we wish. Do we honestly <laughs> wish that we had that as a game? I really do. Um, no. Unfortunately, this is your standardized puzzle game. And I thought that I'm like, I thought I'd be good in buying this puzzle game and like test my mind and, you know, you know, it really invoke the like the puzzle solving and like, you know, brain games, that sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I sat on the first fucking level and I almost wanted to punch my fucking keyboard. And I also used the clues. So I don't know what this is about me. (laughs) I have... I have no freaking patience. Um, I don't know if I can not spot the obvious or unobvious. I don't know. But fuck that game. But I will keep playing it. I did. I played it a, like a bunch of times just so I could get, at least get past the first level and have something to tell. So mm. I admire your persistence. Yeah. Like, I these, these games are reminiscent of like all those like small indie games where it's usually like... It is a game about like escaping a room or escaping like an asylum or escaping a certain like a house location, and it's usually like, mm-hmm. oh, you find a weird box, you know, find a way to open the box, like, yeah, yeah. and you got to push a button, you know, turn here, insert something there, uh, and yeah. But for the most part, that was one of my cheapy ones. Uh, also, went back to Roller Coaster Tycoon. Ah, see, I've got this too, and it's another one that's that's in my to do list. It is just, uh, you know, looking at me angrily on the daily, but yeah, I really want to play this. I, I just love roller coasters and I, I've always loved theme park builder and Sim City and stuff like that. So yeah. I think I'd enjoy my time with this game. Well, see, so this is like old school. Like this is going back. Um, and I remember having more fun with it back then to what experience I had now, I got deeply frustrated. And maybe I've just got to stop playing games where I've got to use my brain because I think that's really giving me a bad time playing games. Um, <laughs> trying Gosh, to build my- gray matter. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, my tiny brain. Uh, trying to build a custom roller coaster was the most difficult fucking thing for me. And I can't explain why. As a kid, I fucking used to nail this shit and made the best roller coasters. And then this time around, I couldn't make it freaking connect. I, the roller coaster kept on going up the hill and then rolling back down. Um, I'm pretty certain it killed some people. So <laughs> <laughs> the experience of that game was definitely not what I remember as a kid. I thought you used to be able to ride the roller coasters too, or maybe that was another game. Maybe maybe it's that newer roller coaster sort of esque game where you can build your theme park um, and then put the roller coasters in, and you can jump on it and ride your track. Yeah, probably. I just felt mm. like there was like somewhere in the middle where there was like a roller coaster game where you could actually like ride the roller coaster. But you, you know what? Who cares? Even if I did roll my like ride my roller coaster, I would have died anyway. So mm. that wouldn't have been fun. Um, and I've just kept on playing the Hunter Call of the Wild. Um, there's a Goose expansion, and I'm all about that. Um, <laughs> I I. <laughs> I, I, I will have every listener buying this fucking game at some point in time because it is such a great game. Mm. I can I cannot express how relaxing and motivating this game is. Um I'm getting so good on the shot, especially bigger creatures. I'm still shit at shooting deer, I can't explain. It's because they can run away faster, I guess. I mm. don't know. But um, the the goose geese expansion is fucking great because you buy a little sleeping bag that you hide in and you put out fake birds. It's great. Nice. So you just wait for the the goose to come to you and then crack crack. Yeah, you wait for a flying V and then you do the little noise. You do like the little wah wah yeah. wah. <laughs> Yours is better than mine. Mine's, I, I know. Mine's I think mine's Wario. <laughs> I don't think I was a goose. I think I was fucking Wario then. Wah. Um. And then, yeah, they land and then you shoot them. Mm. Seriously, well, it's a great game. I, I have installed it. Um, oh, it's now installed. Holy shit. We're one step yeah. closer. Yeah. So we're, we're going to tee up some time, um, hopefully this weekend, to try and get a few people on and do a little uh, online hunt 
and see <gasps> see who comes up with the goods. We're going to have a hunting party. And you know what's going to happen? I'm going to come out the worst. The most experienced is going to come out the fucking worst. Mm. Make sure you buy an ATV. Oh, I need an ATV? Yeah, uh, I think so. Because okay. it helps. The maps are yeah. huge. Like, I can't even begin to describe how big the maps are. Uh, I see, and I've got a, like a... A real life story i guess i could weave in and say i completely understand because when i was young my dad took me deer hunting with my uncle and, and two of his workmates and we walked for like miles and miles and miles hunting and tracking these deer and by the end like by the night like we got there at like six in the morning and hunted these things all day got one of them and then tried to hunt the other two into the late hours of the night and by the end of it my legs were that sore i started crying and uh, made my dad carry, carry me back to camp because I was crying and too sore. So I can totally understand why you need an ATV. Speaking from experience, I just want the ATV because I have no patience and I want to get to another location because you can't fast travel unless there's a, a hunting hut there. Oh, so, okay. But I'm, I'm learned, pretty guys. excited. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, and, it's going to be great. Now, I can't wait to go out with a hunting party now. It's going to be so oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a hell of a time. We just need to try and... How many people can you get in, in your party? I think it's like eight. Okay, we need to try and fill that. Oh, yeah, you can. Unless mm. you want to, like... Because there's going to be an element where you get to be an asshole to each other. <gasps> and the second that you shoot your gun, you scare the animals. So ah, you you could so you could be lining up the perfect... Rest. Yeah, you could be lining up the perfect shot and someone else could just shoot their gun to scare them. That'd be something Sam would do for sure. 100%. Mm-hmm. But we might not be playing with him because he's probably going to be still in jail. That's true. He will still be in jail. Yeah. Mm. But oh well. We love you, Sim. So um, that was so all does the guy you playing. With. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so good. But so bad. But anyway. Um, and the one last thing I wanted to quickly touch on. I went and watched the movie Hereditary with Rach on the weekend. What the fuck is this movie? Why is everyone having, like, everyone has such a strong opinions about this movie. It's scary. It's weird. It's fucked up. It's great. Yeah, like, uh, Rachel and I, we both went into this with the wrong opinion. Um, okay. You see the trailers and you, you you read all the hype on the internet and stuff like that. And it's like, it's the scariest film since The Exorcist and whatnot. So we went into this thing thinking, we're going to be getting jump scared, you know, out of the cinema the entire time mm-hmm. but i don't know have you watched did you watch the movie mother with yeah I did. jennifer lawrence it's got a vibe like that to it if okay. you want to sort of compare it loosely like it's that more slow monotonous dreary pay pace with a lot of imagery that you sort of pick up on a little bit on the way but afterwards you're like oh yep yep joining that dot yep no worries yeah um a couple of genuine jump moments, a couple of horrific images, like holy fuck. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't land for me. Uh, okay. I think maybe because I was expecting like a jump scare sort of horror thing instead of this more psychological. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask, is it this new kind of style of horror that we're going to put in brackets there? Um where it's kind of like yeah like a psychological horror where it's it it has more story development and then it's kind of like it almost it's almost like they made the movie and then they went all right now let's pick out pieces pull them apart and like mis move them around so that when people watch the movie then they pick it up like uh, yeah yeah I, yeah I think so like it was it almost felt like two movies like the Ooh. the first and sort of into half of the second act it felt like that was a movie then the rest of the second into the final act was another film in its entirety. What the um, fuck? The pacing changed a lot in it. The acting, like Tony Collette was fantastic in it and so were some of the other actors uh, whose names escaped me. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's definitely one of those ones I think you need to rewatch uh, maybe two more times to f- really <laughs> probably develop some more solid opinions because it's very polarizing like mm. rage chuck something up on on twitter you know about like what the hell did i just watch and there's some people that are like oh my god it's the best thing i've seen in years it's so intelligent <laughs> da, da, da. and then you get these other ones where they're just like yeah i was laughing at how dumb this was or how stupid this was and things like that so it okay yeah, it's, it's divided the audience 
See, it's going to be, that sort of sounds like a typical, like, I'll wait till DVD kind of movie, so I'll have to wait till then to have an opinion on it, but I haven't fucking seen any movie lately, but yeah, I think I'll wait for the DVD for that. Yeah, I I wouldn't go to the cinema for this one, like, yeah, and and it's, it's, the clock's in it maybe nearly two and a half hours, and they were saying the original cut was over three hours, I'm sitting there going, fuck, you could have cut this thing down to 90 minutes and probably had a more successful movie, but... You know, that's why I guess I'm not in cinema. <laughs> no, I guess not. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> so that's cinema. Film. <laughs> My nan used to say film instead of film. It was adorable. Oh. Except when she used to take us to the movie, she wouldn't let us get popcorn. So instead she bought us packets of Doritos or Doritos for those people that don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> yeah. So. don't worry i grew up with the whole you weren't allowed to buy anything from the confectionery stand you had to go to like big w or target or kmart and get your cheap snacks from them mm-hmm. makes sense for the lollies but you can't cheat on good movie popcorn yeah you really can't that's such so that was, was such an experience i was so sad when i'd be like man i want the bucket of popcorn she's like nah you can either have original or cheese supreme doritos what are you having and i'm just like fuck <laughs> Doritos. Doritos. Can we please make a shirt that just says 8 bit Doritos? We could make a shirt, you know. Nan, and can, be Nan can live on. Yeah. And the A can be like obviously a Dorito itself, like yeah. a little chip shaped A. Oh. Mm. Yep, this is how we make shirts, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we just throw things at the wall and see, and see what, what sticks. sticks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So speaking of throwing things at the wall, do you think we should uh, get amongst this news for the week? Let's do it. This week's news headlines. All right. So the first uh, news topic that we're going to be discussing today uh, relates to a little title called Destiny 2. Never so, heard of it. Yeah, a couple of us have played it once or twice. A little indie title, um, you know, akin to uh, The Room. From what I hear, uh, very God. similar in, in concept. But um, yes, yeah, so Crucible uh, is obviously the PvP element of Destiny and Destiny 2. And via patch 1.2.3, uh, which releases on July 17th, uh, will increase those uh, Crucible uh, matches and modes back up to the original 12 players. Obviously, they scaled it down to 4v4, mm. but now they're bringing it back up to 6v6. So, um, you know, more chaos in there. Yeah, uh, you know they're also going to then bump up the required point points to win to sort of obviously increase the the game time or keep it to what we're sort of used to in the current four v four meta. But mm. yeah, I love Destiny too. You mentioned um, offline that you uh, have installed <laughs> it or are under the process of reinstalling Destiny two again. Yeah, no, getting it back on the system, having it updated, and everything because sometimes I just get these little inklings just to play it again. Um, I've been watching people playing, um, I don't know what it's called, so I'm going to be terrible at describing this, but it's some kind of mode where they're going from pylon to pylon and then uh, they get different yeah, waves. Yeah. It, and ties like, was... into, um, it ties into the latest Warmind DLC. Mm, that's right, it's a yeah. It's motherfucker. It's oh. so hard. Well, it looked like fun, so I'm like, maybe I'll get back into Destiny and give this a, give this a go, but I don't think I'll do the PvP. I was never good at PvP. Ah, it's all right. You're just going to come roll with Nasi. He's on the PC with us now and he is, is just he? god is mode. Is he staying? Yeah. I don't know, but we haven't played in a while, so maybe he's left again. He probably said, fuck these guys. Now it's for the carry and they pissed off. The problem is, is when he carries, he has to literally, like, he has to carry and then more. Like, mm. like juggle. Yeah, we did pretty well. Like, we had a, a pretty cohesive unit. There was... Nasi, Nato, Rach, and myself, and we were winning more often than not um, as a foursome. Um, I don't know how much of that had to do with the fact that we had, you know, the the god tier known as, as Nasi in the team, or we just lucked out against some some trash, or maybe we're just better than we think we are. Um, hmm. But yeah, it's just good fun, as you said before. It's like it's it's sort of an easy, it's like comfort food, that game. You jump yeah. on, you have a little snack, you know, you get your Destiny fix and then you turn it off and you don't think about it for another few months and you come back and you have a little snack. <laughs> well, they just had the um, the faction, um, what is it called? The faction wars? Is it rallies? Yeah, the faction um, rallies. Yeah, fucking future one again. Mm. Fuck them. Why do you guys keep choosing that ugly ass fucking cult? 
Yeah, I I missed. I didn't jump on with the latest faction rally, which sucked because they had some pretty good weapons available. I think on, I think all three of them had a decent bit of kit that um probably would have sort of found its home in in most people's rotations. So mm. yeah, sadly I missed that. Uh, but yeah, I'll get back into it. I'm still waiting for the final um, DLC that comes out later this year and see what happens to poor old Cade Six. Does he die? Oh. Does he not die? Who knows? Oh, that's like I. I figure he's going to die because they can't afford Nathan Fillion anymore, but... Mm. <clears throat> I sure hope that's not the case because Nathan Fillion is the man. God, I he, love him. He he is the man. He's Actually, what has he been in recently? I don't think I do actually know what he's been in recently. Not much, but he, he I, makes... I was I was channel surfing the other day and, and SBS Viceland, I think it is, or SBS2, um, streams a lot of community reruns. And, and really? Nathan Fillion's in a couple of episodes of that is just like a random janitor guy. He's in like two episodes for like 10 minutes tops, I reckon. <laughs> so it was so good just seeing him in this scene where he's in the little speakeasy, you know, underground school bar that they set up and just, you know, having a swill. And I'm like, God, I just want to have a drink with you, Nathan. I love you. What season of Community is that? I think that's in the last season. I think that's in season six. Oh, he's not even in the good seasons. Mm hmm. Six isn't too bad, but yeah, five. It went downhill from four, Ugh. didn't it? Yeah, it really did. Four was rough. Five was sort of rough. And then six was sort of like a you know punch drunk boxer just swinging lean and a few hits on the way out. Um, but yeah, Nathan Fillion, come do stuff with 8-Bit if you've got nothing to do, please. <laughs> yeah, if you've got nothing to do. Acknowledge us. Do another castle. Oh. <sighs> I didn't mind Castle, you know? I loved Castle. I have this, mm. like, weird thing about I absolutely love, like, murder mysteries and crime, those, like, those kind of shows. Mm-hmm. Fucking get my Midsummer Murders on. Ooh, Cup yeah. of tea and some Midsummer Murders. Mm. Can I ask on tea, are you a single tea bag gal or are you a double? Um, I'm a prolonged tea person, so okay. I, I leave the tea bag in there for quite some time. I, I go for mm. ultra darkness. Um, I'm also anti-milk. Okay, see, I'll have a little splash of milk, but I'll do double tea You're bag, psycho. double tea bag, and I'll usually leave it in till it's finished. So, like, I'll drink it with the tea bags in it. Oh no! Yeah. No. <laughs> mm. And occasionally, I'll have a little squirt of honey in there, so I get a little bit of sweetness. Ah, oh, that's exotic. You know what I mm. did the other day with my coffee? I put maple syrup and cinnamon in there, and I tell everyone who is a coffee drinker, try that fucking shit. It is amazing. I. I need to sort of stop this recording right now and go try that. That yeah, sounds maple magical. Maple syrup and cinnamon. Damn, we don't have... Do we have cinnamon in the house? Maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try this tomorrow morning. What do try. you call this thing? Well, I can't call it. I, it's a, I had... Uh, it's in a, like a little coffee place in San Diego called Dark Horse. And they mm-hmm. call it... The, they either call it the champ or the little champ. I think it might be the little champ. And that changed my life forever. Cinnamon, maple syrup in your coffee. You don't need sugar in there. You're good. Yeah, because you get the sweetness. It, it's sort of like having a, a chai latte or something where you, you don't need any sugar because you get it from the cinnamon. Mm. Oh, and the, and the maple syrup, depending mm. how you oh. turn. Look at us talking. We've been talking about so much food and beverages, this this podcast. I'm glad we're staying on brand, though, for the Hungry Games. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to weave this into a food or beverage-based uh, you know, analogy or... Or um, segue, but um, PT, the uh, playable teaser that uh, Hideo Kojima was working with at uh, Konami, obviously before things went south. Uh, PT, just yeah, PT. Mm. Oh, th- damn it! There you go, <laughs> there you go. And you say you could never host a podcast? Get out of here! Look at you. I'm here for the bad puns and then the profanity. That's what and, I'm here for. And the rock solid tea-based segues <laughs> yeah pt mm, so pt uh, obviously the uh ill-fated demo for silent hills that will never be sadly released in, in game form which i never got to play look terrifying as all hell mm-hmm. is currently available on pc in an alpha state via a 17 year old developer yep 17 so this is a kid what? um Kimsa, I guess you'd pronounce his username is Q U Q I M S A R. Kimsa. Kimsa. Apologies if I've completely butchered that Kimsa, but uh, yeah, he is currently remaking the uh, the PT demo, 
uh, on PC. Uh, it's it's yeah, as I said, in an alpha state at the moment. Downloadable for free via GameJolt.com. So that's G-A-M-E-J-O-L-T.com, and just search uh, for Kimsar on there and download it because apparently even in this alpha state, this little 17 year old genius is doing some pretty impressive stuff. The texture renderings are great. The atmosphere that's there, the scares there, uh, you know, are a plenty just like uh, it was on the PlayStation 4. I'm going to oh. download this and maybe shit my pants. Yeah, I want to download this and make someone else play it because I'm, I don't play scary games. <laughs> I'm wondering what the legality is here though. That's that's one thing I tried. I did some digging to try and see if there was any any responses from Konami or even Kojima or you know obviously anyone that's a bit higher up on the food chain. But there's mm. nothing so far. There's nothing. Um, I don't know if he's really? just changing the source material just enough to avoid copyright infringement and things like that. Um, I haven't seen anything as far as if he's using Norman Reedus's likeness in it again. <laughs> if he can avoid that, maybe that would allow further punishment too um but at the same him. time suing a 17 year old what are you going to get out of him you know a couple of dunkaroos and, and a couple of pogs or something i don't know what do 17 year old kids have these days hula hoops hula hoops maybe Stickers. those um those wheelies you know those sneakers with the wheels on the heels and you can sort okay, of slide around i i want a pair of those but they don't make that for adults anymore mm. do you remember the shoes they're sort of making a comeback now and they had like little flashing LED lights in them or whatever lights you could sort of stomp and they were like tuh, 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 and they'd flash lights in the heels. Do you remember them as a kid? I mean, kids still wear them today. <laughs> Toddlers mm. definitely still wear them. Yeah. I, Once I had a again, pair I wish I had a pair. Yeah, I loved them as a kid. Yeah, I, I wasn't allowed anything flash as a kid. <laughs> Impractical, my parents wouldn't buy it. Yeah, well, Hence why I'm a yeah. child adult now. <laughs> making up for lost time oh boy don't i thanks mama and papa heart i think they didn't want me to play with toy guns and the first thing i did when i was 18 is went to a um firing range had mm. a magnum and got two bullseyes thank nice. you gta and i'll tell you what i've fired a magnum and those things kick like a mule i felt i had better control of the magnum than i had of the fucking nine millimeter mm. yeah it's, it's a bit more balanced the weight on it mm. i find because i guess obviously the barrel's a bit longer it sort of discharges the kick a bit better but yeah a nine mil can jump oh, that was that was the worst gun i wish i didn't try that one but the magnum and two fucking two bullseyes nice work no, zombie, that apocalypse. zombie apocalypse Watch oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep think about Swish. the right stuff <laughs> yes yeah, so um yeah game jolt got dot com Anyone on the PC that wants to experience PT, uh, aka Playable Teaser for Silent Hills, download it because don't know how long it's going to stay up there. Maybe those dirtbags at Konami are going to get a sniff on this and chuck a cease and desist and get this thing taken down quick smart. Mm. Or maybe sue this poor kid for his pogs and his hula hoops and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> fingers crossed Kim Sa can avoid any legalities and um, make this thing maybe evolve it into a proper game who knows maybe once the demo is done he can expand it out a bit and turn this into his own little project but hopefully i'm gonna download this and report back in the next couple of weeks on how it plays sounds good can't wait to see it mm. you know what else sounds good miss hart what sounds good a downloadable content addition to shack fu a legend reborn <laughs> the uh you know ill-fated sequel to shack fu that came out way back on the SNES, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was funded by a Kickstarter uh, several years back. Uh, and they've released uh, a DLC pack where you can play as Barack Obama. And uh, oh. this DLC, it's called Barack Fu, The Adventures of Dirty Barry. Speaking of legalities. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how they make this work. But um, yeah, the, the episode is available today. It's a free add-on for owners of the physical retail version. Uh -huh. But uh, the DLC can be also be available purchased digitally at a later date. So apologies there. If you already own a copy of Shaq Fu or Legend Reborn, um, I don't know anyone that does. I'm sure it's a good game. Winky face. Uh, but yeah, you can get amongst uh, the 44th president of the United States uh, kicking some ass. Dropping some bills. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Is he wearing a suit? It's, I assume so. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But there's also uh, Kanye West making appearance in this uh, in this game somewhere, whether it be in this uh, in this episode or a future episode of Shaq Fu Legend Reborn. But yeah, Kanye West will be running around in there too. So I will buy it when that happens. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping he's a little gay fish. Hoping. That's a South Park reference, right? I know. You sort of looked at me angrily then. like <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was kind of more disappointed. I was like looking forward to playing as Kanye and then you threw a South Park reference in there and I'm like, you know, I know Kanye is shit, but still. I like, like he's he's a weird, yeah, sometimes shit human being, but he's a very talented man. I'll give him that. Like He is an extremely, yeah, extremely talented dude. Yeah. It sucks that he's going through what he's going through. Like he, he has bit written some of the best music for that genre ever. Like, he mm. has got some absolute belters that will never be replicated. Um, yeah, but he's just a very unique character. Uh, obviously, being now part of the Kardashian Collective doesn't help either, but, you know, it is what it is, Still which is part of the Apic Collective. <laughs> uh, there you go, Jack. <laughs> um, whose last episode released on this past Monday, uh, which would have been 2nd of July, and I think DJ Payne made a return as the guest host on that one. So, yeah. It is what it is. The news and affairs program on the hashtag 8 Collective. Yeah. So the last bit of news for this week come via way of Blizzard. Uh, we've got another new Overwatch character announced. What do you think of the little hamster known as Hammond, who obviously is rocking around in a giant badass like Spider Tank? What do you reckon? So adorable. <laughs> That's the highest, like, girliest noise you're going to get out of me. Absolutely cute as fuck. I'm really disappointed in the Overwatch community that on the post of the announcement, there were so many people going, why? Like, why did we need this? Why this? Why? And I'm like, fuck all you. Because as I was updating Destiny, I made sure as hell I was updating Overwatch. Because this guy's cute as fuck. Mm-hmm. He's pretty adorable. So... So the character himself is, is called Wrecking Ball in the game, but the little hamster's name is Hammond. He looks like a bit of a badass. He does. You know, this little mech that he's sort of rocking around in uh, does a fair amount of damage. Uh, so it's more of, I guess, a push tank as mm-hmm. opposed to sort of um, some of the other variants out there. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play him. Um, but at the same time, I've said that on the last few character <laughs> announcements and, and still haven't gone back on Overwatch, uh, which sucks because I like the game. It's fun to play. I feel like Overwatch does take some organization and some effort to get into. Like, I definitely mm. can't play Overwatch by myself because, fuck, it's still, uh, still toxic, still toxic community. Yeah. Um, so I at least need one person there to talk to to enjoy my time. Exactly. Um, but I don't think I've played Overwatch since, I'm going to say Christmas, maybe. Oh, no, yeah. I think I dabbled a bit after then, but still. Like, I haven't been really into it for a yeah. long period of time since yeah. then. I, I don't know if I played after the last wave of Junkenstein's Revenge. I don't yeah. know if I played since then. I don't think so either. Doomfist was the last character that came out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's been a while. Mm. Uh but yeah, little little wrecking ball. Um, he's rolling into the uh, the the public test realm as of uh, he'll be out by the time this episode's released. So it's came out this past Thursday, uh, mm-hmm. the fifth of July. Uh, so so PC players will be able to roll around and, and cause some havoc as little little uh, Hammond Hammond mm-hmm. the hamster, which is adorable as hell. Super cute. Uh, yeah, but I like that they're still continuing to roll out more characters for the roster yeah yeah um, i've been known to have natural moments of brilliance and that was one of them so uh, i'll take that (laughs) like i like the way his character design is um the the playability um lots of like defense shield some attack i love that he has the that ability where he's rolling around and he builds up momentum Mm -hmm. and then um, i've seen a lot of people play um not hanamura Lee Jong Tower, mm-hmm. and I'm saying I'm saying it like the bloody voiceover person, um, because people are jumping gaps, like they build up the momentum, and then they're, now they're jumping gaps and then demolishing people as they do that's it. I don't great. know if they're going to keep that in because that's this is all from the test servers, but yeah, 
Oh, it's good. I like a mm. bit of difference. I like a little bit of uh, change in the dynamic. I'm curious to see what this roster is going to end up at. Like, what's going to be the final amount of heroes that will be in Overwatch over the next, let's say, probably two years, three years. Maybe I think there's a probably pretty pretty long life cycle attached to Overwatch that Blizzard want to invest in and keep people coming back to obviously there's the overwatch league now and things like mm. that uh so i'm curious to see you know looking back from from year one day one to maybe looking forward to even 2020 if there's going to be you know 50 heroes at your disposal by then or something something insane like that that's like bonkers. yeah and and that's what i love about these ongoing evolving living games where you know the meta that's this quarter it's you know roll out of xyz characters but then the next the next sort of season starts a new character rolls in and completely changes the game and all those characters that were tried and true are now all shit and you've got to come out with new team team makeups and things that's what i like a lot about these games yeah yeah like uh, like a lot of people hate it when they're they're mixing stuff up but i don't know I, I say that I, I'm really all for it and then what will happen is I'll get off this podcast and I won't still won't touch Overwatch because <laughs> I'm still playing a game where I solve a puzzle in a room. Mm, yeah. Because that's entertainment, yeah. kids. That is entertainment. Anyone else that says otherwise can kiss my ass. <laughs> so the last bit of news um, that I don't know, I somehow, actually, no, there's two bits of news. I don't know how I missed it. Um, I sort of skipped through... <laughs> I don't question what you do, I just let you do it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm out of control over here, help. So the first one, uh, Mario Tennis Aces, which uh, released this past week on the Nintendo Switch, will be getting three new characters this coming uh, fall in the United States. We've got Diddy Kong, we've got Birdo, and we've got Cooper Paratrooper rolling into town. Fucking Birdo. Um, I've been playing a bit of Mario Tennis Aces, and I purposely left it off my list earlier because I wanted to bring to mention um, the single-player story mode they've attached into this game. Yeah. There's one level that I'm stuck on. I haven't played in a little while now, but it's called like Mystery Mansion or something like that. that There's this room with these mirrored areas and these moving targets you've got to try and hit in a certain order and do charge-up shots to unlock it. and And holy fuck, it is giving me some pain. Like... There was a time when I was playing the Switch on another flight and it felt like I was going to snap the Switch in my hands. Like I was wow. that frustrated and I was holding it and bending it. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to stop. I'm going to put this down. i got to relax. Because Mario Tennis Aces brings out the rage. Does and, it? Um, yeah. Some of these some of these levels in the, in the campaign, like Benny, when I mentioned it on Twitter, Benny... Um, Ryan from the pop culturist said he had the same pain as well as a few of other people on, on the socials. Um, yeah, it hurts and it sucks. So, uh, I yeah, don't have you... the patience. I honestly mm. don't. And I don't want to do campaign on something like tennis. So I'd strictly be playing it for multiplayer. Like, yeah, multiplayer is pretty good still. Um, mm. I'm enjoying playing a few of the online tournaments, but the skill curve and even just the sort of matchmaking in it. Like I'll roll in and I've played five games and I'll play somebody that's got, you know, the equivalent of 3000, um, you know, points in the game, which, you know, probably equates to 300 matches. <laughs> and you see them go, yeah, no worries. And, and, you know, they're, they're spinning this tennis ball on a, on a string and doing this, that, and the other, and just, you know, super shot after super shot and just r- making me run around and look like a complete knob. Um, so that can be a bit disheartening, but when you don't get matched up with Roger Federer, it's it's pretty good. Okay, noted. Mm. It's yes. one of those games, the, like the Mario series, where I'm just like, I don't think I'm going to get my playability out of the cost, so I'm not going to buy it. Yeah, yeah. If you're happy to have a cartridge, I could, oh, you, you know some people too, but yeah, JB can get it to you for about $52 on, on mm. a cartridge. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I can buy like 12 room games. <laughs> 12 times the punishment. Yeah, fucking hell. Mm. I'll see you at the asylum. Okay. So um, the last bit of news, uh, something that you guys sort of covered off in a bit of larger detail 
on last week's episode tying into the uh, Australian Classification Review Board. Um, there has been a bit of an evolution or evolution. Is that the right word? Bit of a mm-hmm. bit of progress. progress. What am I looking for here? Progress. Yeah. There's, there's been some progress. There's been some affirmative action There we uh, go. regarding we happy few. Uh, obviously, uh, we found out a couple of weeks ago that it had been refused classification here in Australia due to the, uh, j- drug use and, uh, interactive drug use as they like to put it in their report here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the Australian classification board, uh, after people sort of protested it and put a claim in against them, have um, deemed it, you know, approval uh, here in Australia. It's getting the R18 classification. Uh, and they've said, um, you know, in quotes, a three-member panel of the classification review board three. has... Three? Is that three what Three members. Yeah, no, sorry. I just I just shake my head. There's like three people. Mm-hmm. Probably have, fucking old farts. Yeah, you know, it's Huey, Dewey and Louie. Um, all sitting in there, probably never Ooh. played a video game in their life. Um, and yeah, yet they've got all the sway to, to deem what's, what's good and what's not in the gaming space for Australia. But, um, yeah, so the three, three member panel, Huey, Dewey and Louie have, uh, unanimously, unanimously determined that the computer game, We Happy Few is classified R18 plus in brackets restricted with the consumer advice, fantasy violence and interactive drug use. Um, so on the back of that, uh, Compulsion, who uh, put this game together, have released a short statement on their website. Mm. And they said they are, in quotes, extremely pleased with the decision of the board and excited that our Australian fans and new players will be able to experience We Happy Few without modification. So they haven't actually had to change any of the game, any of the style, any of the imagery, similar to what happened with you know South Park, The Stick of Truth. Mm-hmm. Where they had to censor certain scenes with the crying koala uh, to allow this game to get released here on our shores. So we're going to get We Happy Few in its entirety uh, later this year uh, when it releases. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I've got I've got access to this game in in early access, and it just it just doesn't hook me. Yeah, it does I've, not hook uh, me. I've never been interested in this game. It looks pleasant. I like the art style and stuff, but it definitely has not once drawn me in to actually go out and actively play it or investigate it or, you know, anything about it really. So when I guess um, I'm actually, it sounds horrible. I'm actually genuinely surprised the amount of people who are really hyped up and excited the fact that it's passed now um, and that it is a playable game. I didn't realize that it already had such a strong fan base um, unless it was just... You know, the gaming community happy that we got one up on the fucking mm. government in a sense. But Yeah. But that um that consumer advice, fantasy violence and interactive drug use, mm. wouldn't that suggest that that a lot of our games would have some kind of interactive drug use? Yeah. Like yeah. one ups and healing and stuff? Yeah, like like it's it's a very broad stroke. Um and like how? yeah, technic technically as as you landed on right to start with, mushrooms in Super Mario Brothers. You take mm. one of those, you get bigger, you gain enhancements and buffs and things like that. Yeah, you go faster, you're stronger. Hmm. So yeah, where does the line get drawn? I I guess maybe a lot of it comes down to the look and the emphasis on how you do it. Like Mario's not sitting there going, I need to eat this mushroom to, to gain these abilities. He just, you know, walks over it and gets bigger. Where in this, there is such an emphasis on take joy to feel normal, you know, take this drug to to live the best life and things like that. So maybe because it is such a, you know, a, a stern message um, right from the drop in this game. Yeah, uh, I guess so. I, I guess that makes sense. It's the main focus. It's the main, you know. But I just, I, I think I've kind of stated it before that I just don't understand where their minds are at when they're, you know, rating one game when then there's other games that are definitely like a million times worse. Like, I don't want any games restricted, but I'm just always baffled by mm. the ones that they decide to just pick out. They stick their hand into a fucking bowl and just go, yeah, we'll stop this one. Mm. Yeah. And, and something that you touched on too earlier regarding... The, the gaming community and, and even social media, I wonder how much how of this community thing where they're like, yeah, you know, we, we've got one back or, you know, boo you Australian Classification Review Board for not um, giving it approval from the get-go. I wonder how much of this is going to, you know, 
be t- translated to you know vote with your wallet like show that you actually <laughs> cared about this game by buying it instead of just you know being this social pariah getting on a bloody soapbox and and trying to you know stick it to the man yeah um, what happens if it's a bad game hmm what happens yeah. if that happens? Like, I don't wish that upon anyone and I don't want to, you know, pretend like I know anything because I don't. Um, but, you know, like, what happens if, yeah, like you said, like, it's either, it's for me, like, it's either a bad game or for you, like, no one decides to buy it in the end. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know if it, because it did get taken down off early access on Xbox, so it wasn't available in my library for a while. Mm. I don't know if it's back on there now. When I jump on the Xbox later this week, I'll see if it's there and see if anything's changed from my first run around but yeah like it just i don't know it just didn't land for me like i like this whole dystopian clockwork orange vibe that they've got going on but Mm -hmm. yeah it just it just felt a bit off maybe because i did play it sort of in the real early access stage so there wasn't much meat on the bone but yeah we'll see yeah i remember actually when you told me that you had played that that you weren't really feeling it so Mm. Oh well, like you said, we'll we'll see if it um maybe maybe the game just wanted you to feel a bit iffy at the start, like make you uncomfortable or uncertain. Maybe that's the theme at the start. Who knows? Mm, no, there's a lot of drug taken, a lot of emphasis on the drugs. Is it really like a like? Is it yeah. really that in your face? Yeah, because like the whole society, like um you know this whole society in England, um take this drug joy to feel quote unquote normal. So. Mm. If you're on the on join everything, you're, you're part of society and you know, you're seen as a, a worthwhile human being. But the people that aren't on the joy, uh, that I guess are living normally and through clear eyes, they're all outcasts and scum and get killed and beaten in the street and murdered and jailed and all this stuff. So there is a big sort of emphasis on it the whole way through where you you stop taking joy so you start seeing the world for what it is and yet other these other people are starting to see you as the bad person because you're not on the drug and oh i wonder mm. what underlining message this game has mm. we talked about that last week in regards to politics and this just sounds like there's a big deep underlining message yeah. that has me curious yeah like like i think from just my time with it and from my knowledge of you know reading and viewing other other source material tied to we happy few it's it's obviously very much there is probably some political agenda in there where there is sort of you know forcing messages from the top to comply or you know you'd be outcasted or you know deemed deemed i guess unfit for society Mm. um and then maybe it is sort of a sort of just a, a shot to society as a whole that um you know there is such a reliance on on drugs and various other things to enhance your quality of living i don't know mm. yeah. rose tinted glasses in a way mm-hmm. oh. yeah mm. so that's the news this week miss hart hmm. it's just me i was like gaming news a, a bit like on the lighter side we always seem to have like a bunch of massive news stories sometimes of the year and then other times it's fun yeah i, th- I think there is probably that that e3 fatigue uh, yeah. going on going on right now mm-hmm. um so there will be a bit of a, a lull until sort of gamescom and, and psx oh, yeah. later this year but uh it's 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 a bit of a barren landscape the next few months even with releases like there's nothing really you know big triple a tent pole until red dead 2 uh you know cod and, and battlefield roll out spider-man and the like so mm. yeah it's it's sort of that time where you can hibernate for a few months you know? Yeah, you could play games like The Room. Mm. Yeah, and get frustrated and yeah, you know, get stressed, get some grey hairs. Have an um, aneurysm. Oh, my God. For some reason, I don't know why, but when you said aneurysm, I thought you meant prolapse. And I'm like, <laughs> why do you want one of those? <laughs> it's like your butthole, but in the brain. Mm. <laughs> yeah, prolapse brain out your nose or your ear. Oof. Ugh. Mm. It probably Visual. exists. Probably okay? exists. Check out rotten.com. No doubt there'll be something on there. Okay. Uh, this is. Oh, it's, actually, it was you. I was about to say, why have I heard Rotten referenced like two nights in a row? And it was because mm-hmm. of you, two nights in a row, actually. Yeah, I'm a bad person. Um, any any kids under 18, do not go to rotten.com. Once you're 18, go check it out. Does uh, it still be warned, work? there is some heavy, heavy stuff there. Is it still um, a website? I'm about to find out. Watch my computer just combust. Well, He's well, better go on this. a watch list, probably. I'll just hit enter. Maybe it's not. 
Because they have a lot of screwed up shit on there. <laughs> like, I, I think I think the website could be gone because it's just wow. pinwheeling. I'm just going to see if other things still search fine. Yeah, I think it's gone. Okay, oh, kids. Um, that's a that's the end of the fucking yeah. era. That is. Yeah, I thought that that site would be serviced and maintained till the ends of time. At least till our ends of time. Like that mm. was that was stuff we would look at in high school. Like you jump on the. The IT computers in the IT room, and it's usually blocked, and you just mm-hmm. find your way around it. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw many, many things that will stay with me forever on that website. What was the most fucked up thing? Oh, some of the ones involving the kids, like you know, the the children that are in the accidents. Like you mentioned, oh, the one yeah. about the kid putting his hand in the meat grinder. That's the one um, that's yeah, that's firm in my memory bank. Yeah, one of the ones where like a, a guy on a motorbike sort of got partially decapitated on a on a fence or something like that. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. There, there's so many gross things on there that just oh, it still sort of make my skin crawl a little bit Do now. Do you want to know the them. fucked up thing? You want to know the really fucked up thing? Mm-hmm. You can find these pictures on Facebook. What? Yeah, like like all you need is that one fucked up group to appear on your feed, and there's some disgusting photos that can come mm. up on your on your Facebook, like. Or your Instagram, like, you know, like eventually it can get blocked, but it, so people post up some really fucked yeah. up shit. Yeah. Pe- there's a lot of people out there that are into some, some pretty, pretty appalling things. Um, yeah. You know, I, I got a pretty, I'm pretty open-minded and I'll, I'll you know, check out anything and, and whatnot and, and you know, try and look at it with clear eyes. But yeah, I'm never going to actively start a group praising <laughs> that or sharing that kind of stuff. Like it's just, yeah, it's, oh. Do you have I'm open eyes when you look at Blue Waffle? Oh, no. You went there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mentioned how much that one disturbed you, so I thought I'd bring it up. Kids do not look that up. Mm, uh, we know that still exists. That still exists. That will always mm. exist, I'm pretty certain. Yeah. Yeah, that stays with you for life. Yeah, see, this is what we grew up with, kids. Like, this is this was what we did for entertainment on the interwebs. Mm. You kids have, don't know nothing. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you kids and your hula hoops and your pogs. Jeesh. Your fucking wheelie shoes. Mm. Side note, one last thing before we, we pack this thing up. Um, there's, there's a thing, there's a sort of show and an anime and toys that are obviously attached to this now called Mechards. And they're like matchbox size cars, but you push them over a card, a la Yu-Gi-Oh card sort of vibe, and it transforms into a mechanimal. So it can be like a robot or an animal, and then they battle. And it's the weirdest shit. Like they've just literally ripped off Transformers or Hot Wheels, um, you know, Transformers with Hot Wheels, with matchbox cars, with Yu-Gi-Oh, and just thrown it all into a blender. And they've created this thing called Mechards, like... What could yeah. go wrong? Mm-hmm. But it's it's apparently very popular. Archer wants really? mechards all the time, and it pisses me oh. off because they're shit toys. Okay, I was going to <clears> wonder <throat> like what was actually the age group for this one. I wasn't too sure if they're appealing to you know the old school Transformers and mm. or it's it's for the young ones, is it? Yeah, it's for the tackers. Yeah, all right, you know, then the, I'll give that the a four, sweet the four miss. and ups. Uh, nope, mm. nope. On another yeah. note, though, Yokai Watch is lots of fun to watch. I will yeah. watch that with a child. I am actually uh, debating showing My Hero Academia to Archer. Oh, I haven't watched this show, but everyone raves about it. Mm, I haven't watched it yet either, but I just <laughs> signed up to Crunchyroll just to watch it. So, oh, it's on Crunchyroll, is it? Yeah. So okay, I'm going to check it out. Because it's it is lighter in tone, I think he could probably watch it. You know, it talk, like it dives Maybe into superheroes and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll check it out first. I'll watch an episode <laughs> or two first before we chuck him in there too. I love it. First episode, just straight up anime titties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, well, Archer, now you know. Don't tell mm-hmm. your mum. <laughs> uh, he'd, he'd know what they're about. You know, he's pretty switched on. <laughs> he yeah. hangs around you enough. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, we show him the way. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> anything you want to say before we uh, move on out of here for another week? Uh, hashtag anime titties. Hashtag anime titties. Yep, with the D's. Um, yeah, so uh, as as per usual, uh, check us out at We Are 8-Bit on all the social medias. Uh, hashtag 8-Bit Collective or 8-Bit.net. 
to check out all the other talented podcasts and content creators in the stable. There is like 22 you, you of us bro. out there. Like you game, bro. You're fucking happy, mate. Um, you know, obviously, Cruzy and Nato, our two uh, brothers from other mothers, flying the YGB flag into 2018 and beyond, uh, kicking some goals there, uh, as well as all the other podcasts that you guys mentioned last week, but not mm-hmm. you game, bro. But we got them now. Um, but yeah, find us all there. Uh, also check out audiotechnica.com.au for the best in audio equipment. We're talking headphones, microphones, turntables, gaming headsets, you name it, they've got it. And also a heap of streetwear and swag. Uh, we'll start doing some giveaways again soon, as well as a few other things tying in with, uh, AT, which we're very, very excited about. Mm. But, uh, find me at Brendan 8-Bit, find Ali at Miss Ali Hart. Anything you want to say before we... Bounce out of here for good for the week. I just want to also bring up uh, that we do have merch. So go, don't forget to always check out our Design by Humans store, which is yes. we are 8-bit as well. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, Nintendo have sadly taken a few of our other shirts down because uh, Nintendo <laughs> are paranoid motherfuckers, but we are getting them changed slightly and they'll be back again. They'll live again, guys and girls. They will live again. But until next week, on the world first 111th episode we don't know who is going to be hosting we don't know who's going to be on the episode but it's going to be a belter until then much love stay hungry you've been listening to the hungry gamers one of many gaming and geek culture related podcasts from the 8-bit collective over on 8bit.net check out more episodes on your podcast service of choice and while you're there please be sure to rate and subscribe until next time boys and girls stay hungry